Good morning. We are extremely pleased that you are here. It is good to come together for the purpose of co-creating. Do you agree? You are knowing what you are wanting. You are enjoying the freshness of your desire. Those are the only desires that feel good, aren't they? The fresh ones. Those old stale desires don't feel so good, do they? And when you think about it, there's never a reason for a desire to hang around in unfulfilled form so long that it gets stale. Because when you ask, it's always given. So if you have stale desires, what's up with that? We understand how when some smart aleck dead entity like Abraham would say, hmm, are you appreciating the contrast of your time and place? And don't you just love those desires that are being born out of it? We can understand how sometimes you would not want to give us a resounding yes. When you ask, it is always given. Step one, ask. It always being given is a step two part. In other words, that's not your work. When you ask, it is always given. But sometimes, without meaning to, you may not be in vibrational alignment with what you're asking for. And it's easy to understand why that might happen, because you are physically focused. There's lots for you to observe. And as you look into your environment and you see those things, you cannot help but notice them as they are. And as you notice them as they are, you achieve further vibrational alignment with them. And as you achieve further vibrational alignment with them, you continue to offer more vibration about them. And as you offer more vibration about them, you continue to get more of it. In other words, we understand how, without meaning to, you might be achieving vibrational alignment with what is, even though what is is not exactly what you want. Think about it. So if you're giving all of your attention to what is, and some of what is pleases you, then you're getting more of that. But some of what is doesn't please you, then you're getting more of that. And then you say... Abraham, why do you keep harassing us by telling us that when we ask, it is always given? Because that can't be true. Where's my stuff? There are all kinds of things that I'm asking for that is not apparently being given because I'm not finding it in my experience. And we say, it being given and you letting it in are two different things. You have to be in vibrational alignment. That's like saying, I can't hear what's being broadcast from that radio tower on my radio. It must not be in broadcast. So you tell all your friends, they're not broadcasting them from that tower anymore because I can't hear a thing. And your friend might say, well, do you have your radio on? Do you have your tuner set to the same frequency? Because if you are not set to the same frequency of the broadcast tower, you're not going to be receiving what's being broadcast. And the same thing is true of anything that you are asking for. If you're saying, I want more money, I don't have enough money. I'm tired of not having enough money. I've never had enough money. I hardly know anybody who has enough money. I want more money, but I don't have enough money. I'm sick and tired of not having enough money. It's so irritating not to have enough money. Not having enough money is scary. I wish I had more money, but I don't have enough money. I want more money. You're not a vibrational match to more money. You're a vibrational match to exactly how it is. And exactly how it is is going to continue to unfold in your experience. Sometimes you say, I'm stuck. And we say, that's not possible because everything's in motion. You say, well, I'm stuck. I don't have enough money. We say, you're not stuck. You just keep recreating the same thing over and over. In other words, it's changing. It must change because the vibrational frequencies are constantly being emitted in the powerful now. And what's happening is coming in vibrational response to the broadcast that you are emitting. So it is constantly changing. It's just changing to the same thing over and over and over again. And that's really worth thinking about. In other words... When you put it in that context, doesn't that make sense? It is changing, so if I want it to change to something more pleasing, then somehow I've got to focus upon more pleasing things. And then you commonly say, but it is so hard to focus upon something that is pleasing when I'm surrounded by something that is not pleasing. And we say, 
but you can do it. You just cannot or may not be able to do it all at once. In other words, we don't expect you to go from beating the drum of something not wanted to suddenly forgetting all of those vibrational habits. We don't expect you to leave behind everything that you've worked so hard to come to believe. Sometimes people will say, I must focus upon that because it is true. And we say, and what makes this fact that it is true make it something that you now think that you must focus upon? And you say, because truths are truths and we owe it to ourselves to give truths our attention. And we say, but why not be a little more picky about the truths you turn your attention to? When you say, this is a truth that I must focus upon, we say, all that a truth is is something that somebody else focused upon. That's what made it a truth. When a whole lot of people focus upon something, it becomes true enough in enough of their experiences that you say, oh, this is reality. But what we want you to realize is that it is only true because somebody focused upon it. And just because somebody else focused upon it, we think it is a little bit illogical for you to say, I see this truth that I do not want, but because someone else focused upon this thing that they did not want and gave enough attention to it that they attracted it into their experience because law of attraction said that they must, now I think that I should do exactly the same thing. No logic in that, is there? So what we are encouraging you to do is to make a decision that you will pay more attention to the way you feel because when you pay attention to the way you feel, then you have awareness of what you are doing with your vibration. Your emotions are literally your guidance system to let you know how you are doing on your way to what you've been saying you want. Jerry and Esther have a wonderful navigational system in their vehicle. And the satellites in the sky combined with the antenna on the roof of their vehicles and the computer that is in the vehicle always knows where they are. So when they decide they want to go someplace, if it is a place that they do not know, they will program in the name of the city, the name of the street if they know it, even the street number. And Magellan will say to them, please proceed to the highlighted route. And then Magellan will guide them turn by turn to where they say they want to go. Magellan never says to them, where have you been? <laughs> because that has nothing to do with the only task at hand. The only task at hand is getting from where you are to where you want to be. And Magellan is so clear about what you said. It's a woman's voice. The man's voice was far too bossy. <laughs> so Jerry and Esther affectionately call her, her, she. Jerry sometimes will say, shut that broad up. Because she is relentless. She never forgets what you told her you wanted. She never forgets where you said you want to go. So if you take a side trip, if you stop at Taco Bell or stop for fuel, Magellan will say, please proceed to the highlighted route. 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 She does not become more agitated. She does not get louder. But she insistently continues to say, please proceed to the highlighted route. And eventually, if you continue to ignore her and you go very far from the route, she will say, when possible, make a legal U-turn. <laughs> you have a similar guidance within you. It comes to you in the form of your emotions. And when you pay attention to the way you feel, you can feel when you are upon your highlighted route. You can feel when you are in alignment with that which you are saying you're wanting. And you can also feel when you are not. It is exactly the same sort of guidance. So as you are paying attention to the way you feel, you are then able to, by reaching for thoughts that continue to make you feel better, you are able to keep yourself in vibrational alignment with that which you are saying you're wanting. The best words that we've ever heard offered in your physical environment were coined by Joseph Campbell when he said, Follow your bliss. That's the key to success in all things. Absolutely true. But you don't have access 
to the feeling of bliss from your feeling of despair. The vibrational difference is too great. Any more than you could set your tuner to 98.6 FM and hear what's being broadcast on 6.30 AM. In other words, there are different vibrational frequencies you're not going to hear. So, when you say, well, if I cannot follow my bliss, what hope is there for me? We say, well, follow the trail of bliss. And the first step from depression along the trail of bliss may very well be for you anger. You say, well, that's doable. (laughs) And isn't it? Can't you feel it? Have you ever been in a place of depression where you couldn't get a breath of air? And then you thought of something that made you angry and didn't it feel better? You got to admit that anger feels a whole lot better than that depression, just like blame feels better than guilt. It does, doesn't it? (laughs) Blame feels a lot better than guilt. There is so much more disempowerment in guilt. There is so much more loss of the feeling of freedom in guilt. So, if you were, as most of you are, as you come to these gatherings usually vibrating somewhere between frustration and overwhelmment and joy. In other words, that's usually where your emotional set point is. Different, depending on the issue that you're focused upon, but usually in the upper registries. We would not counsel you into anger from your feeling of frustration. That's going the wrong way. But if you are in despair, we will root for the breath of fresh air that anger would bring you. And the reason that we would coach you into anger is because we know that in that anger, you're going to feel some relief. And in that relief, you're going to have moved your point of attraction. It will have shifted a little bit. In other words, you're not as stuck in disallowing the well-being that you've been asking for as you were in your despair. Now, we would never say, just go to anger and stay there. Because from anger, you can easily get to frustration. And frustration is a big difference in feeling from anger. So, are you getting the sense of this? What you're reaching for as you are moving up the emotional scale. What you're reaching for is the feeling of relief as you leave the resistance behind. So there is relief in anger. You know there is. And there is relief in frustration. You know there is. And there is relief in hopefulness. And then there's relief in belief. And there's absolute relief in knowing. In other words, you can feel when you release resistance, which is the only thing that is keeping any of you from what you are really wanting. You are pure, positive energy beings. You are God force in physical form. You are extensions of source energy, and life is supposed to be good for you. You are creators that flow the energy that creates worlds, and you are standing on the leading edge of thought. It is supposed to feel good for you. Life is supposed to be good to you. And when it isn't, it is only for one reason. You have picked up a habit of thought and you've practiced the beating of that drum long enough that you have established it as of a vibrational habit. And as you continue to feel that vibrational habit, unless you do something to change the way you feel, law of attraction is going to continue to bring you stuff that feels like that. And as law of attraction continues to bring you stuff that feels like that and you observe the stuff that feels like that and you justify the way you feel by the stuff that keeps coming, then we understand why you feel stuck. But we promise you, you're not. You just got a cadence going that you need to shift a little. We've noticed that sometimes very powerful, very good teachers who are counselors might not understand the power that you give yourself when you find something that feels a little better to you. Most people worry when you go from depression to anger. Most people who know you would rather you're depressed than angry. Because when you're depressed... You go away and you leave them alone. And when you're angry, you're in their face. You're hard to be with. But you must reach the place if you are going to listen to the guidance system that is within you. And it is what the art of allowing really is about. The art of finding thoughts that cause me to allow my connection with source, that allow the well-being that I've identified to flow to me. So, when someone says to you, you should not be angry, Just say to them, maybe not, but I am, and I'm glad I am. You should feel how bad I felt before I got mad. 
This anger is a big improvement for me. And if you don't like it, go someplace else. I won't be here forever. But right now, it's what I'm choosing and it feels good to me.